In September 2022, 17-year-old Arian Kurtage stole and then leaked 90 clips of unfinished GTA 6 gameplay. He pulled off one of the biggest hacks in gaming history in a one-star hotel room under a court-ordered internet ban without his laptop. He'd been set up in that budget travel lodge in southern England under police protection after hacking rivals doxed him. He was on bail over another high-profile hack at the time, and the online ban was a condition of his release. Just days before the GTA 6 theft, Arian hacked Uber and fintech firm Revolut. He had help from his crew of teen hackers known as Lapsus. Arian's rivals claimed he had made $14 million in cryptocurrency from his hacking exploits, but no companies ever publicly admitted paying Lapsus. Arian hacked to be seen as trendy and risky, his psychiatrist said, and when the inevitable punishment for that enterprise closed in on him, the combination of his talent and his neurodiverse conditions would make for a miserable end. Arian lived in Oxford with his mother and younger brother in the years before he fell in with lapses. He was autistic and also had ADHD. He went to a special needs school where he was sometimes difficult to control, according to his childhood doctor, Nicholas Hindley. He was a particularly impaired individual, Dr. Hindley told his trial in 2023. Arian was once briefly taken into care after physically assaulting his mother, but was then assaulted by a staff member while in care and so returned home, Bloomberg reported. He was a very vulnerable person, more vulnerable than his autism and ADHD might suggest, according to his psychiatrist, Claudia Camden-Smith. Quote, he doesn't want to be different. He wants to be like everyone else, wants to be seen as trendy and risky, unquote. Camden-Smith told his trial. Arian hacked to get that trendy, risky rep. He hacked for street cred, Camden-Smith said. The first time he was arrested over a hack was in January, 2022. With help from Lapsus, he had accessed the servers and data files of British telcos BT and EE, and demanded $4 million to delete the files he stole, the BBC reported. This threatening text message was sent to 26,000 EE customers. The ransom was never paid, but Arian and an unnamed 17-year-old who helped him stole directly from some people via their crypto wallets. The wallet of EE customer Daria Jasinska was drained to the tune of $69,000, according to Bloomberg. Robert Malloy lost $2,500 and got an email from the attackers later that day which said, thanks for the peas, bro. Arian would often get right back to hacking after an arrest, and a month after he was questioned over the BTEE breach, he and Lapsus targeted chip giant NVIDIA. They had access to NVIDIA's servers for an entire week and said they nicked off with one terabyte of data. It was a wake-up call for us and it, it um, accelerated, intensified um, uh, some areas of vulnerability that, that uh, quite frankly, every company has. Among the data Lapsus stole was source code for the company's AI frame rate boosting tech, known as DLSS, usernames and passwords for more than 71,000 NVIDIA employees, and a 250 gigabyte hardware folder with information about all recent GPUs. Lapsus started to leak the NVIDIA data and said they'd release more unless NVIDIA got rid of an anti-crypto mining feature called Light Hash Rate or LHR from its GPUs. LHR was added in 2021 at the height of the crypto bull run to essentially stop crypto miners from buying up all the GPUs. Lapsus also demanded NVIDIA open source its graphic chip drivers for macOS, Windows and Linux devices. Two NVIDIA code signing certificates Lapsus leaked were swiftly picked up by other hackers who used them to make their malware look more authentic and trustworthy. Lapsus and NVIDIA hacked back by encrypting one of its computers as it tried to steal data, but NVIDIA denied this. Six months later, Arian and Lapsus targeted Uber. It was just a few days before he would leak those 90 clips of stolen GTA 6 gameplay. At the time, 
Uber said it was likely the hacker got in after buying an Uber contractor's password on the dark web. That contractor's personal device had earlier been infected with malware. Arian and Lapsus then used a technique known as two-factor login fatigue to breach Uber. The contractor was bombarded with 2FA approval requests as Lapsus repeatedly tried to log in using that account. Eventually, one request was mistakenly accepted. Lily Van Newman from Wide explains. And in this case, the attacker was using a version of it where someone receives push notifications on their phone uh, that says, do you want to accept this login and authorize this login? And that's the se second factor of authentication. And the target in question here, an Uber contractor, got a ton of these notifications. The hacker just tried to log in, mm. tried to log in with a stolen username and password. And eventually the person, according to Uber, you know, had rejected and rejected these push notifications, but just got fatigued mm. by the you know, experience, this deluge and hit accept. And then that's it, the hacker is in. Once they got in, Lapsus managed to access more Uber employee accounts and got into the company's G Suite and Slack accounts. They, rather politely, announced their hack in a message posted on Uber's company-wide Slack channel. I announce I am a hacker and Uber has suffered a data breach. But then, quote, reconfigured Uber's OpenDNS to display a graphic image to employees on some internal sites, unquote, Uber said. Arian was doxxed by rivals on a hacker website not long before his arrest in March 2022 over the NVIDIA breach. Former business partners he had fallen out with published details about him and his family, where he lived, his school and images and videos from his social media, according to the BBC. The rivals also posted claims about his hacking exploits and $14 million fortune online. After a few years, his net worth accumulated to well over 300 BTC. He is now as affiliated with a wannabe ransomware group known as Lapsus who has been extorting and hacking several organizations. He was released pending an investigation into the NVIDIA hack. But given he'd been outed online, Arian was set up in that one-star Travelodge Hotel in Bicester, a small city in South Central England, for his safety. He was under strict bail conditions in the hotel, including no access to the internet. But nevertheless, it was from that internetless and apparently computerless hotel room that Arian managed to breach Rockstar. He got hold of more than 90 clips of unfinished gameplay of the world's most eagerly anticipated game, Grand Theft Auto 6. He also took the game's source code. Arian had made a makeshift computer out of a mouse, keyboard, phone, and an Amazon Fire Stick he had bought, presumably, from a store somewhere near the travel lodge. He was caught red-handed when police burst into his hotel room at 9pm on September 22nd. The fire stick was connected to the room's TV, which had allowed Arian to access cloud computing services using his new phone, mouse and keyboard. Police had traced the GTA 6 hack back to Arian via a Telegram user named at Lily Howarth. Lily Howarth was a moniker Arian used, police had discovered. Police found an iPhone 13 Max Pro hidden under the bed covers. Rockstar's logs showed that the device used in the hack was the exact type and specification of the iPhone seized from Arian at the travel lodge. Arian refused to give police his PIN, so police have never accessed the phone. Prosecutors told Arian's trial he breached Rockstar by pretending to be an employee and a contractor who had lost or couldn't remember their password. Masquerading as an employee didn't work, so he tried using contractor account siwa.jrad. He got in this time and then used a former employee account mode.hayatullah to get into Rockstar's game development system. Once inside, Arian swiped those 90 clips of in-development footage of GTA 6 and he said he also took source code for the game. Most of the 90 clips were just a few seconds long. Arian claimed that he downloaded the clips and source code from Rockstar's internal Slack channel. He made his GTA 6 clip goldmine public on a GTA fan forum under the name Teapot Uber Hacker and threatened to release the source code. He also posted this comment to Rockstar's internal Slack feed. Quote, 
I am not a Rockstar employee, I am an attacker. He said that he had downloaded all data for GTA 6 and that if Rockstar does not contact me on Telegram within 24 hours, I will start releasing the source code. Rockstar confirmed they'd been hacked and GTA publisher Take Two took legal action to get the clips removed from the internet. The source code was never released and some have disputed Arian's claim he ever had the code in his possession. The roughly one hour of leaked early build footage seemed to suggest GTA 6 would have two main playable leads, a man and a woman named Lucia and Jason, and would be set in Vice City, a place based on Miami. The clips appear to largely be made for the purposes of bug reports or animation tests. It's not like a reveal trailer leaked early, or it's 90 minutes of uninterrupted gameplay. There are some interesting tidbits, but the footage doesn't really shed a lot of new light on the game or answer the biggest questions we have. A playable female lead named Lucia did show up in the first GTA 6 trailer that came out on December 4. Lucia, do you know why you're here? Bad luck, I guess. To the trailer for the company's new GTA, Grand Theft Auto apparently is what GTA means, leaked early online and... Uh... And a few infamous Floridians and Telltale Landscapes confirmed that Vice City is the location. Are, are the, the thieves the protagonists? You, you play as a thieves and a killer and a murderer. There was a bloke paired with Lucia in the key art and in the trailer, but it's not clear here's the Jason in the clips Arian leaked. I mean, do you steal it and then do you take it to the chop shop? Joe Kernan from Squawkbox may not have had a clue about GTA 6, but Arian's hack more than a year earlier did get him the notoriety he was said to crave. The gameplay theft and his subsequent trial, where he was identified for the first time, was big news. But in custody at the Feltham Young Offenders Institute, the cocky criminal who would post graphic images and smug messages after his hacks was all but gone. He was distressed and repeatedly destructive at Feltham, his trial heard and he once threw urine at a guard. But he was still searching for that cred. He vowed to get right back to hacking if he was released. And there was still public discussion, if not praise, of his audacious talent. Arian's defense lawyer, David Miller, told his trial that his client was a genius who could be of more use to society if given the chance. The trial judge, Patricia Lees, described Arian as very employable once he could snuff out his criminal inclinations. Quote, he is not someone that they could currently work with. He needs to make the choice to work hard and he could achieve that potentially. That would be a very different future for him, she said. Alongside all these seemingly contradictory descriptions of him, genius impaired, employable criminal, vulnerable belligerent, Arian had to be punished. Because of his autism, Arian was judged unfit to enter pleas or to stand trial. So at his trial in London, the jury was asked to only determine whether or not he did the alleged tax, not if he did them with criminal intent. The jury found that he did. Ultimately, Arian's sentence was directed at his vulnerable, potentially employable genius side. Judge Lees sentenced him under the UK's Mental Health Act. And rather than prison, Arian was sent to a secure hospital where he will remain until experts say he is no longer a threat. Arian could, in theory, remain in that hospital for the rest of his life. You've been watching Polymos News. Please subscribe.